2023 has definitely been my best year as a reseller. And in today's video, I'm going to share some of the things that I think helped contribute to that and helped increase my income, increase sales, and just overall make 2023 an absolute banger. Hey, I'm Carboot Chris. I'm a full-time UK online reseller. I operate mainly on eBay and also whatnot, but also some other platforms as well. I'm going to bring you regular podcasts all about reselling, hopefully to keep your company, to entertain, or maybe to educate. Who knows? Welcome to the Everything Reselling Podcast. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Carboot Chris and I'm a full-time reseller. I've been a full-time reseller since 2019. I was part-time from 2015. So I've been doing this a little while now and 2023 has been a cracking year for me. So much so that I'm almost at a point where I've got to alter the way my business operates as in limited VAT, and all that. I am very, very, very close to those thresholds. 2023 has been a massive increase for me. And I'm going to share with you 10 points that I think has made that happen this year. Different things that I've changed in my business, different ways of working, little tips and tricks. And I'm going to do it right now. First up is I'm on Whatnot now. I've adopted a new platform. So I'm on eBay and Whatnot. And Whatnot's been a bit of a game changer. I've been on there since March this year, 2023. So I was an early adopter and um, it's kind of changed a lot of things in the way I operate in my business. Um, it gives me an additional income. This is not income taken from somewhere else. So basically I'm not... Um, taking items away from another platform like eBay and then putting them onto whatnot. It does happen occasionally, I'm not going to lie, but it's not like I'm robbing Peter to pay Paul, if you know what I mean. Um, I did that at the start. It's also a fast turnover on whatnot. Um, stuff comes in and it goes out very, very quickly. I also source specifically for whatnot. So when I'm out and about, um, I'm looking for things that I can put on that platform and it will. those things will never touch another platform. They won't go on eBay and whatnot. They won't go on eBay first and then go over to whatnot. You know, it's just for whatnot. And it's just things that I know will be good for the platform. And also with whatnot, there's no listing, or you can list if you want, but generally no listing and no photos. Um, some people do. Some people put a lot of buy it nows on and have stuff ready to go and list things for auction. But I don't. I generally, generally just show, um, describe, sell. Um, and that works for me at the moment. I'm not saying I won't change what I do in the future. But there you go. That's the first thing. What not has been a real game changer for me. Live selling. It's going to be a game changer in 2024. Um, it's going to be big. That's my prediction. The next thing I'm going to share with you is promoted listings on eBay. Now, I've always used promoted listings for as long as I can remember now. eBay have had way more fees off me than probably what they should have had. But at the end of the day, it's bringing in the sales. And this year, I changed the way I do promoted listings following the eBay Open. I had a one-to-one -one at the eBay Open. And um, the guy who did the one-to-one -one with me... Um, he was from the promoted listings background. So he, I'd like to think he knows what he's talking about. Now, what I always used to do on promoted listings, I used to set up a campaign, uh, an automated campaign. I'd leave it for a week and then I would take it down, start again. At the time, I felt like that was refreshing my promoted listings, keeping it fresh, starting again, um, forcing the algorithm to re-recognize re all my listings and put them back into search. But in reality, I was told at the eBay Open that that's really not a good way to do your promoted listings. Basically, what the guy said was, if you're starting and stopping once a week, you're losing a big chunk of time when your promoted listings might not even be appearing as promoted. So basically what it means is when you set up a promoted listing, 
it takes around 48 hours, something like that, um, for your listing to be fully settled into the algorithm, to be fully settled into the search rankings and to be found by customers. That's what he told me. So he said that if you start and stop once a week, you're losing at least two days where you might, you might, <laughs> it's a big might, you might miss sales, your items might not be promoted correctly. Um, so he said, basically, the best advice he could give is set your promoted listing rate up, your campaign up, and leave it, just leave it for a year ish, maybe even a bit longer than a year before you even touch it. Just let it run because that way all your listings will be settled into search. They will be um, into the algorithm and all that stuff. And it, it will be optimized that way. That's kind of how they, they said it to me. So basically redoing your promoted listings every week, every two weeks, every month might not be a good idea. And I feel like I've left mine uh, now, since since eBay Open, I set one up, which was months ago. I've left it. It seems to be working absolutely fine. So I'm going to leave mine for a year before I change it. The next thing that I've been doing in 2023 is trying to increase my average sale price. And to do that, you kind of have to find better stuff to sell with higher values. It's pretty obvious, but it's not easy. Um, so basically, when I'm out and about or when I'm online shopping, uh, when I'm searching for stock, sourcing, whatever, I'm looking for things that, you know, are more really more than £20 in value. And that's quite difficult, actually, because when you've been used to going to boot sales, picking up one pound out, one pound items, selling them for £10, you know, that's quite difficult. Now what I'm doing is I'm kind of I'm still picking up those cheaper items, but the cheaper items, I'm directing those more to whatnot because people want low, lower value bargains and stuff like that. And not putting those on eBay, but putting the more expensive stuff on eBay. And that definitely seems to be working for me. My average sale price this year is just over £30. And that is as high as it's ever been. And my eBay sales are currently the highest that they've ever been. Um, last year, my average sale price was around £20. And when I first started as a part-timer, my average sale price was around £10. So I can see the progression over the last few years. I'm now at just over £30. I'm pretty happy at that. It'd be very hard, I think, to go over 40 uh, I think 30 is a pretty good, a pretty good number. The next one's a big one, and it took me a while to pluck up the courage to do this. But I decided to change all my listings to free post on eBay. And this really splits opinion. And I under totally understand because I've resisted this for, um, what year are we on? 2023. I've resisted it for eight years. But I finally decided to give it a go. And from the pretty much from the moment I started offering free post, um, I definitely saw an increase in sales. Sales improved a lot. And there is one thing that I would tell you not to do with free post. And I did it. I'm, I'm guilty of this. But I would say to you, if you're considering moving to free post, don't do this because it didn't do well for the first week. When I first changed to free post, um, I did a bulk edit on every listing. I took off the postage, put it to free post. And what I did was I increased my prices on everything by about £3 just to try and cover the free post. And you know what? It was a big mistake because I found for about, well, I found for several days my sales tanked, completely tanked. And um, that's probably why I'd literally put up my prices. And after about a week of this, I had two choices. I thought I'll either I'm going to have to put my postage back on and change it or take that additional three pound off that I put on. And that's what I did. I bulk edited everything and I took off that extra three pound that I put on to try and cover the free post. I just took it off. 
And that seemed to then write everything. Because after that, um, maybe people got notifications that I'd reduced the price again. And it seemed to write itself. And from that point onwards, everything new that I've listed has been free postage. I think it's worked a lot better. And I'm definitely not going to change back, put it that way. That's how much I'm pleased with it. I've not noticed any negatives in my income. In fact, I'm sat here talking about the best year that I've had on eBay. So clearly there's no negatives to be had from adding free post. Um, and actually, if you seriously think about free postage, it's not just about competing in price. Um, there's added extras that come with free postage. So it improves your ranking. It definitely improves your ranking on eBay when on search results. I think it improves your sale conversion, your click-through rate, because people see free postage, you're higher in the rankings, and I think you're getting more clicks, people are going into your listings more. I don't have proof of that, really. I've not I've not got a before and after to tell you about, but I feel like, anecdotally, that is definitely going to be an improvement. But here's something that I didn't expect. So, by offering free postage your listing is more attractive to customers, okay? Because people love free postage. People want to see that that total price in there, right? But what I didn't expect was that in making your listing more attractive, more people watch your item. I've got way more watches on things at the moment with free postage rather than not free postage, way more. And you know what comes with more watches? More offers, that's the second thing. <laughs> More offers. Not just offers coming into you on items, but offers that you can offer out. And that means more sales. So an added bonus of free postage means more watches, more offers in, more offers out. And also something else that I've noticed that's happened a few times is multi-buys returning customers. And what I mean by that is that because you're offering free postage, people are not worried about having to buy everything that they like in one go to combine their postage. What I've noticed is that people buy one item, you post it for free. It's the full price. But then a week later, once they've had that first item, they think, oh, I like that. I'm going to go back and get another item. So they come back and buy an additional or an, a completely different item or something else similar to what they bought before because they were just testing your store out to see what kind of seller you were. But I've noticed a lot more like repeat customers like coming back like a week or two later because there's no negative for them. They're not having to pay postage twice. And so I think your chances of getting repeat customers is higher. So there you go. Free postage has been really good for me. Maybe it could be for you, but... It's definitely a personal choice sort of thing. It's not for everybody. Another thing that I changed this year is my return policy. I've had 30-day returns for quite a long time. Now I'm on 60-day returns. I've decided to change it. I've I've seen um, other YouTubers do it and also um, Jason T. Smith, who I'm friends with, he always advocates for having 60-day um, returns on. And I changed it to 60 days months and months and months ago, way before, like probably in the first part of the year, I moved to 60 day returns. And since then, I've never had a return over 30 days. Never, ever, ever once had a return that's been over the 30 day mark. And also, I believe by having the 60 days, it's a little bit more attractive to customers to buy from because they feel like they've got an extra period. They've got an extra long period of return. But in reality, the f the chances of them returning in 60 days is very, very slim. So maybe it helps the algorithm. I don't know about that. But that's something that I've changed this year. It might have helped a little tidge. I don't know. Something that's definitely helped my income. And it's not like an additional thing this year. But it's something that I've been watching other resellers do, that which I've not had to do. And I'm still working from home. I don't have any storage costs whatsoever. I don't have a unit. I don't have an office. I don't have 
any of that stuff, all my business is still located in my in my home. So I think that gives me a real advantage income wise. It, you know, certainly saves me at least four, five hundred pound a month. It could even be more than that if I had, you know, all units are different prices. I've often considered moving everything out and it, it might be something that I do in the future. If income continues to go on an upwards trend, I might do it. But at the moment, um, I'm happy to save that money and stick everything still at home. And in fact, if you think about it, if live selling is going to be even bigger in 2024, then it's even more reason to stay at home and not get a unit because uh, the reason you tend to want to move out to, to get storage space is because you need it for the stock. If you're live selling on a regular basis, and next year it could be eBay live selling as well as whatnot, then your stock is going to be coming in and out pretty fast. And that's the idea of it, right? So if your stock is coming in and out pretty fast, your storage requirements are going to go down and therefore you can potentially save money. So being able to still run my business from home is, is a definite Brucey bonus and definitely increases my income over the course of the year. Something that I've done a lot this year, more than any other year, and that is paying up and buying collections or large job lots of stuff. So when I say that, I kind of mean like not being afraid to put your money where your mouth is and really go all in on something if you believe that it's got the profit and it's got the potential. This year, I've done several big job lots of stuff and it's proved very, very profitable because obviously if you buy a large quantity of stuff from somebody, um, your per item price goes down and obviously your profits can go up. You've got to do your research, of course. You've got to make sure it's worthwhile. But if you think about some of the things that I've done this year, some of it's been documented on YouTube. Um, trainer Lady. The Trainer Lady deals that we did, um, me, John Luke, Charlotte, um, we did some big deals with Trainer Lady, you know, thousands of pounds worth of stuff. But we also, as a result of it, made thousands of pounds worth of profit from those deals. Um, that was big. And that was kind of the catapult catalyst to to doing more bigger deals and i've recently done a big deal i spent 1500 pound on a large collection of figures toys and collectibles and that's going to prove to be a good deal i think i'm pretty sure of it i'm, I'm about halfway through working my way through that i've done a big transformers um, deal where I bought a lot of toys and a lot of those have sold for some good profit and I've done other deals throughout the year and also I'm thinking about next year being being the year of the bungle collection deal where I want to buy more like that I really do if I can buy bigger collections like that it means that I'm I'm having to do less of the four o'clock starts to get to a boot sale less of the sourcing in charity shops which is proving pretty unsuccessful at the moment and so much so that i've got a i've changed my business card recently i've actually done a big rebrand on my ebay and my socials i've changed to kind of car boot chris now on it pretty much everything other than this youtube channel and I've kind of put on my new cards that I'm willing to buy collections, to buy figures, to buy toys, to buy anything really. So I'm hoping that that might generate a bit more of that kind of deal. Now, the next one might seem like an obvious one, right? But listen to the words, right? This is something that I've said for several years now, and it's been none more so accurate than this year. And I've always said that the best way to improve your sales is to be willing to sell. And it sounds so bloody obvious. It really does. But when you say that, let's break it down. The best way to improve your sales is to be willing to sell. We're resellers. Get that stuff in and get it out. Sell it. 
Don't hoard it. Shift it out. Get the best price you can. But don't be holding on. This is what I would say to you. Try not to be holding on for that that crazy price that you think that you're going to get. And three years later, you've still got the item in your stock room. People do tend to get sort of stuck on the prices that they want or they pr the prices they believe that things are worth. And at the end of the day, something is only worth what someone is willing to pay for it. And if, some, if you've got an item up for £100 and somebody offers you 50 I guarantee that 90% of resellers out there, of you guys, 90% of you will dismiss that £50 offer out of hand straight away. You'll say, I'm not taking £50 for a £100 item. <laughs> and we've all been there. But before you dismiss that, I would say to you, just have a little think about it first. How long have you had that item in your stock room? What price did it start at and what price, you know, what price is it now? £100, obviously. And what did it cost you? If that item only cost you £5 and you've had that item in your stock room for six months, I'm taking that 50 I'm taking it and I'm running because that £50, I can turn that into more money pretty quick. That's what we do. We're resellers. There's no point hoarding it. Sell it. Get the sales in. The more sales you make, the more sales are going to come in on eBay. eBay sees you're a seller, not a hoarder. And, you know, the algorithm moves and the more sales you make, the better it gets. It roller coasters, it snowballs. Roller coasters is probably the wrong word. You know what I mean, right? Don't hang on to things. If it's a reasonable offer, if it suits the amount of time that you've had it, if it suits the cost price, even the cost price sometimes, if you've had an item too long, the cost price becomes irrelevant. It really does. If it's something costs you £10, you've had it for two years, and somebody offers you £5 for it, take the £5. Take it because you've had it two years. It's a waste of time, you know? So there you go. Off me little soapbox there. The best way to improve sales be willing to sell. That's probably better than any of the other tips I'm going to give you today. Something I've also done in 2023 is I've changed my listing process. I've always been a app lister, a phone app lister. I would do everything on my phone, complete listing, photographs, the whole shaboodle, everything. But a few months ago, I saw somebody on YouTube talk, talking about their listing process and I decided to give it a go. I've always been resistant of using the desktop listing process, but here's the way I now list things. What I do, I do a very, very quick piece of research. I do not spend a lot, a lot of time on research. I will do about a minute of research, you know, looking at souls, looking at listeds. Either start something from scratch if you can't find something to sell similar or sell similar. But I will use a desktop. I'll go through the listing process and then save as draft at the end. So once I've done the listing on the desktop, I will save as draft. And then what I do is I'll do about five or six little batches. So I'll do a batch of five or six listings on the desktop, save as draft. And then what I do... I'll pick up my phone, I'll open the eBay app and I'll start on, I'll open up each draft and do the photographs over there, photo, photo, photo. And then at the end of it, I will list that item, make it live on eBay. And that is how I'm currently doing my listings. I find it much, much better, much more intuitive. But also there is stuff on the desktop eBay listing process that is not on the app. It's ridiculous why it's not on the app. I don't know. But um, there's two things that I think actually make a massive difference when you list on the desktop. The first thing is being able to put that description of the condition of your item. Because that little one line description, you know, like pre-loved it but in very good condition or brand new with tags. 
you can write that in, no you can't write brand new with tags because when you select new the box disappears but when it's used you can put like pre-loved but in very good condition okay and when someone searches your item right underneath the i think it's right underneath the price comes that little one line of the description and i actually think that is a massive bonus that you don't get on the ebay app why they don't put that little box on the app i haven't got a clue it's it's crazy surely it wouldn't take much to put that box on the app but it's not on there and it should be and you're missing out if you're not using that box i definitely think you're missing out the second thing that i do on the desktop listing process that you can't do on the app is i add in approximate weight and dimensions of the box of the parcel okay and i do this because i feel like it improves the gsp and international sales when you do so i feel like i've had more gsp international sales than before when i just do use the app because if ebay has a rough idea what your item weighs and what the rough dimensions are of your item, then they can give a better price to a customer who's buying via GSP. So I've been filling that in, and I think it's been working. What I don't do is I don't weigh everything. I don't weigh anything, actually, to be honest. I put an approximation, and I put an approximate size of what the box will be when it gets sent. I don't put i don't put the exact size we'll be there all day that's that kind of defeats the object i just put an approximation in there okay so it just gives ebay a rough idea how much this weighs and what kind of size it is and hopefully they'll give a more accurate price to a gsp customer and there's the two things that i think you lose out on if you don't use the desktop listing process i think that's been brilliant for me also it improves my productivity on listing too the final thing I'm going to share with you that I've been doing this year in 2023 is I've been removing dead stock from my eBay store. I've been taking things down or I've been selling them elsewhere. Um, at the eBay Open, they openly told us, they openly told us <laughs> that after 90 days, your item pretty much is stagnant. It's stale. It's dead. It's way down the search results. I guess unless something is very, very unique, um, it might not even appear in a search result. So I'm not saying to you after 90 days you should remove your item. What I tend to do is after two months, I refresh, I take items down, I'll sell similar, I'll reduce the prices, I'll change the title, and I'll relist. But what I'm saying to you is if you've had items hanging about your eBay store, even if you've sold similar a few times, after about six months plus, you should probably consider whether it's going to sell. And definitely after a year of doing that, you should probably take it down because it's probably not a good idea having it hanging about on your eBay store. It's stale stock. And if you've reduced it by price four or five times in a year, it might not it's, let's face it, it might not sell at all. eBay might not be promoting it very much. So I've been taking off a lot of stock. I've also removed a, everything under £10. I'm not interested in selling those low-value items under £10 on eBay. I had, at the start of this year, 1,500 listings on eBay. I now have 900 listings I've trimmed my eBay down by 600. So what is that? That's about 30%, isn't it? Is it about 30%? Let's just, let's not argue about it. It's roughly 30%, okay? I've taken a lot of stuff off my eBay store. Old stock, low value stock. I've removed it all slowly. Not all at once. I don't advise you do that. But just slowly but surely, over the course of the months, I've removed a lot of stock. And, of course, I'm sat here telling you about a good year. So sales have been better for it. I'm making more sales with 900 items listed at higher values 
than with 1,500 items uh, listed with lower values. So at the minute, better quality items are in my eBay store, higher values, and a faster sell-through rate. And they're the three things that you need to be focusing on if you want to improve your eBay store. That's the dream, isn't it? That is the dream as an eBay seller. Good quality stock that sells quickly for higher values. And that is where you need to be. It's taken me years to get to this. And it's been a really good year. And I hope that these tips have helped you somewhat. Or you, it gives you something to think about. Even if like you just think about one of them and think, ah, yeah, I'm going to do that next year. 2024 is the year I'm going to increase my average sale price. 2024 is the year I'm going to offer free postage on everything and see how it goes. Or 2024 is the year that I'm going to be open to sell. I'm not going to just sit on sticky stock. If someone offers me a fair value for something or someone offers me money for something I've had for two years, I'm taking that money and I'm running. I'm going to buy some more stock. I'm going to buy better stock than what I bought two years ago when I bought this item that isn't selling. Yeah, Whew. that was that was an intense video, wasn't it? Um, I hope it has helped you. I hope 2023 has been a good year for you. Um, I hope 2024 will be even better. I hope you'll smash the sales. I really hope live selling is going to be the big thing for 2024. I really do, because Whatnot's been great this year for me. And I'd love to see eBay come up with something. And um, hopefully we'll see it next year. Don't forget... Um, all these things are things that have worked for me and my business. Everybody's business is completely different. Yours is completely different to mine. Even though we are resellers, things are not the same. So the advice that I'm giving you and the things that I've done are the things that have worked for me. It might not work for you. I'm just putting that little disclaimer in there, okay? Take care, everyone. Thank you for watching. If you're listening on a podcast, then thank you for listening. And don't forget to hit that download. Um, have a great 2024, everyone. See you later. That's it for today's episode of the Everything Reselling Podcast. I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, to follow or to subscribe wherever you're watching or listening to this podcast. And we'll see you on the next episode.